Oh, you know. Hello, Steve. Welcome. I think you can unmute yourself. I've given you permissions. I, I, uh, I should probably know that by now. Hello, everyone. You only see? Mute. Yeah. Maar Nelda, dit is diezelfde uitdaging wat ons uh, de afgelopen rek heet. If I'm if I'm correct, we will be around about eighty to a hundred today. That's good. That would be good. Oh. Um, Jolande, stel vir my jou e-post rondom die opname, dan sal ek jou, jou uithelp. Want as, ek kan nie net vir een individu vir jou Zoom toestemming gee, ek moet vir ander toestemming gee. So two more minutes, then we'll stop.
dog is sleeping on the ground behind me and he's snoring, just snoring up a storm. Uh, I cannot hear it, so it's fine. Like, okay. <laughs> Let's see, there he is. Oh. There's my little puppy. And it's, uh, it's raining today. And so typically when it's raining, he, is, he does not like rain or storms. So he will, he will hunker down here in the basement with me all day long. Yeah, he's a, uh, he's a good puppy. Ik ben een shark zien jij zei je kan niet aansluiten met je bij je Engelse school, wel dit maak je daar ook zo bij wat ze school je is niet. Um, je kan nog steeds aansluiten. Um, al is je bij Engelse school, onze baie onderwijzers bij Engelse scholen, maar die onderwijzers zelf is nog Afrikaans. Is it still um, very cold there, Steve? Um. No, not like last week. It was yest yesterday was beautiful, sunny, clear, um, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, so maybe like 20 degrees Celsius, roughly, maybe, or is, yeah, it was nice. Okay, let's just give one more minute for the late puts. That's fine. That is fine. I'll just keep admitting people as they come in. Um, Emerentia, you can do school work at the stair. Um, Maar je kan ook eens in de bedieren gestuurd, maar denk je beetje zo weer is school. Je moet daar ook of het Engelse school is. Okay, cool. Um, hello, everyone. I'm going to speak English um, because of our host. So please bear with me. Um, uh, welcome. Last week we had the grade fours to seven session, and I think it went really well. Got some really good feedback, and there's already a lot of people who started translating some of the Desmos activities, um, which is cool. Um, and I also got a list from some of the teachers um, of other good activities. So after this month, I will compile a list of activities that I think that is um, complementary to um, with our, our curriculum, and then we can use that. Um, so I just want to make sure everyone can hear me. So the question I'm going to ask is whether you're a, a member of the FIOVIA which is the union, Afrikaans one. So it's a year for ya and a hm for near. Okay, so just, just drop that in the chats. So I can just see relatively how many people are not members and how many are members. Um, there was a small um, error with the um, participation certificates, but we've solved that. If you have any queries, please just ask, we'll solve, solve it immediately um, or ASAP. Um, but you can only get your certificate if you're a member. Um, and then also your accreditation points from SAIS, you will submit it on your behalf, but you can also submit it, but it's, it's 
the bureaucracy behind that is it's not it's not nice okay so I see the majority of you guys are members and I want to thank you for that because you guys are helping us to build more resources so that we can help you and then thank you again Steve you're the guest of the day you will <laughs> blow our minds again so thank you for that um, thank you guys for joining so this will be roughly an hour session remember you can use the chats um, to ask questions um, and it's very cool to see within a, a a time span of roughly a week, week and a half, everyone adapted to Zoom. That first week it was me and I received almost 1,000 emails. Um, but you guys really adapted quickly. So that's cool. Thank you, Steve. The floor is yours now. Oh, thank you. Good morning or good afternoon. And thank you for coming. Um, let me share my screen. And I'm going to, it's going to be useful to have um, maybe two tabs open. So if you want to see what's happening on the Zoom, you can, but I'm going to ask you to go through some activities. And I'd like us to try to at least go through parts of two different activities today. Now, you are all eighth grade and ninth grade teachers. And so I'm assuming, and Johan, you might be able to clarify, I'm assuming that's kind of like an algebra type curriculum maybe, or they're working with variables or graphs of lines. Would that, would that be correct to say? Yes. So here is, so the, the two things I, I would like to do today is um, uh, we're gonna, the first activity we're gonna do is called coin capture. Got it, oh, that is, thank you. Algebra and trig and some and some geometry. So um, actually that that is good because the coin capture activity we'll do first I'll introduce you to is a is an algebra where you're writing the equations of lines. It's it is very much like a game. And then shifting shapes is more of a geometry focus. Um, so what we'll do is, is we will play those two games for a little bit and then I will make sure that you have a, a your teacher account is set up in Desmos and that you've got your labs turned on. And uh, providing, uh, providing the, uh, the time that is left, um, we'll try to create a very simple activity and I'll introduce you to the Desmos bank and um, how to search for activities on Google. At, at any time, at any time, feel free to email me with any questions you have or any, um, any help that you might need because that is what I do. I, I want to help you. I want to help you transition to Desmos and to use Desmos well. So um, at any time, feel free to email me, and my email is in this document. Um, I, I shared. I shared this link in the documents. Um, I don't know if you guys have have had this yet. So let me plop. Let me drop this in the chat. And so the link to the document, you might have to copy it and paste it into your browser. But if you'd like to have an access to this document, that document is there. So here, here, this would be awesome if you would do this. If, so there's two ways you can get to this. If you would like to go to student.desmos.com and enter this code and sign in with your uh, Google email, or you can click on this link that is placed in the chat. And um, I I've just turned the activity, you can go through this activity at your leisure. Um, once I get some people in, I will pause it and we'll kind of discuss uh, what this activity is about and how this could be used in a class. But for right now, uh, just uh, kind of explore this activity. And uh, this is called coin capture and my, my kids love doing the coin capture activity
So again, there are two ways to get into this activity. If you'd like to get into this activity, you can go to student.desmos.com and you can type in this code or there is a link in the chat, which will also take you there as well. I'm going to close this window. Ah, yes. And, and so this is what I see as a teacher. And so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pause this activity in five seconds so that I have your attention. So in five seconds, four, three, two, one. So let me pause this activity for a moment. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry. And so this is what I see um, from a teacher point of view. Uh, the check marks mean that the student successfully completed that activity or that part of the activity. If there is an X, um, that means they did it but they didn't get all of the coins, but they can go back and try it again and fix their equations. The dot means that the student is actively working on that right now. What I can do as a teacher, I can click on any student's activity and I can see what that student is doing in, in real time. So I can see that the equation that they used, and if I would like, I could make a suggestion or offer some feedback by clicking on that little feedback icon in the top. And so Ellen will get this feedback. What Ellen will see is uh, after I leave the feedback, Ellen will see a small, um, a small little uh, speech bubble that appears at the top of her screen. So, So my, my advice, you were very close. And so she'll be able to see that feedback. It could be a suggestion or it could be something else that I write. And you can do these activities over and over again. So if you wanna click on the start over button, um, I can start over and look at more of the uh, coins. And then I can add another equation if I want to, there's one equation. And I can add another line and then y equals 3x plus 1, then I can get the other coin. So I did that one in two equations. So this is what I see from a teacher's point of view. I can see any student's screen, or if I click up here at the top, I can see every student's screen. So I can see all of their equations, their most recent equation. I can see their graphs. I can see how they've knocked out the coins. And I can also see all of them together. Let's see if this works. This is going to be a little bit slow, the overlay. Yeah, I didn't know if that would work very well this morning with so many people involved. But so for, from a t for remote learning or distance learning like we're doing, and our schools are now closed for the rest of the school year, and they may not be open in the fall. So this is, a, this is a, a tool that a lot of the math teachers in the United States are using, simply because I can track what the students are doing. So let me, uh, let me unpause this for a moment. And um, if you want to take a little bit more time to try to go through a couple of the other slides, if you'd like to skip ahead. And then uh, eventually, I'd like all of us to go to the last couple of slides in this activity.
but go ahead. I'll give you guys a, a couple minutes to play. And, um, and I'll look for any of your questions in the chat window that you might have. So um, these uh, uh, so there's two questions up there that um, if if you want to, I will address uh, the the second question are the lessons always existing lessons um, or do you design your own you can do both this lesson existed um, but it is possible that you can create your own lessons just just for the things that you would need in your classroom and I do want to show you how you can kind of mess with that and do that. The other question that Ellen asked, how do you add another equation? So Ellen, up on my screen, I'll go to a student view. This is what a student would see. And so I'm going to type in y equals, um, y equals x plus 3. That was the good equation. And um, it would be nice if it kept a list of my equations but if I want to add another, uh, another graph or a line, I click on the add another line. And then what it does is it locks that, that prior line in place. And now it allows me to write another equation. So this one would be a y equals 3x plus 1. So good question. Very, very good question. That would be a fun session to do. If there was a, to ha having a session on just like building your own activities, because you guys are playing with them and getting a feel for them, and maybe you're trying to use them in class. Maybe a session like this where you're designing your own would be a fun one to do. So I'm going to give you guys um, a maybe three more minutes to play, and then I'm going to ask everyone to go to a, another screen for me. But uh, you guys are doing awesome. Awesome. If, if you want to look up here and see what the teacher sees, as he, uh, so I can click through the activities and I can see the equations that are there and the equations that are not there. And I could go to a student screen. So see number of a number of equations is in the bottom was two and that's the fewest that you would need fewest in, uh, actually the fewest in the entire so this is a uh, fewest in the whole class so there are over uh there are 49 students in this and so if you got two equations that's the actually the fewest amount in the entire class so this is comparing your work to everyone in the entire class So actually 67 students, but 49 students who did that activity there. Oh. Very good, very good. My dog is snoring louder than he did before. <laughs> Ooh. So as you, some of you, you may not have gotten through all of the slides, but like, for example, on slide seven, 
this is this would be a very nice way to have students working with perpendicular lines. So you can introduce a number of different line concepts. Number eight would introduce students to horizontal and vertical lines. Okay, I'm gonna pause everyone. I'm gonna pause everyone in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. All right, I'm sorry to pause you, but so so do me do me a favor in the in the chat window, in the chat window. Um, is this an activity that you could use with your kids? Uh, would your kids like this activity? Um, would, is there anything different you'd like to see? Or, or maybe, uh, yeah, you, just general thoughts. That, <laughs> Ellen, you are asking the perfect questions. The perfect, you are asking the perfect questions. So, um, all to teach slope concepts, gradient concepts. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, so do me a favor. I, I am going to, um, I'm going to make everyone when I unpause the class. I'm going to make everyone go to um, slide 14, which is the last slide in the activity. Ellen asked um, up here in the chat, how do you plot the coins yourself? On the last slide, this is a chance for students to make their own kind of coin activities. And as they start to appear in the challenges, other students can try them. So I want to give you a chance for you to make your own coin activities and let other people in our class, there are 69 students in this class, to let them try this activity. And I think this idea that Marianne put down would love for this for an enrichment question. I think that is an, a, a perfect use of this activity. So um, if you are, Click in the upper right hand corner and what you can see on my screen, I see some students that are showing up in the challenge. Moniki, yes, I will, um, for activities you design yourself, yes. And, and this is something that maybe you and I can um, email um, maybe uh, work, work through some email, or if we need to later on, um, you and I can just have a Zoom session or a, a Google Meet session and work that out. But yeah, not, um, yeah, oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. You have my email in that in that Google document that I shared before in that Google document, which I've posted. Oh, not that one. Um, in the Google document is my email address. So uh, feel free to email me with your questions. Yeah, that'd be probably the best way to go about doing that. So I'm going to click. All I have right now are names, and so it looks like people are are working on their um, it, on their challenges. If you would like help, or if you'd like me to stop and explain how to do the challenge activity, I can help you do that if you'd like to. So here is Nadine. I would click on. Okay, so Nadine, so you've got to press them, um, you've got to drag all 10 coins, and when you're done, make sure you press place. So Nadine is starting, Nadine has got two coins placed, and is getting ready to place a couple of other coins. 
so I can click on these names and these names. So here's uh, so here is uh, let's see, Marie. Ooh, so she will be done with all her coins first. What will happen is once she clicks on place the coins, um, then that challenge will be available to other students in our class. And then you all, you can then click on one of those activities. So if you notice on my screen right now, there are three challenges that anybody should be able to see and do. So you can just literally click on these challenges. So if I go to Eileen. I click on her screen and then I can ooh, I could do the challenge x equals two yes I cannot do oh look at all the challenges look at all of them you guys are awesome so if you've posted your challenge, try to look at one of the other challenges and try and, and give that a try. This is a, my kids would always try to stump me as the teacher. As the teacher, they would try to create a coin challenges uh, that would make me use more than four or five equations. Oh, Lita, that's a good one. That, that is, let's see. I think there's, a, oh man, this is awesome. You guys are doing awesome. Oh, see, oh, so you did it in five equations. So this is something to think about kids. Um, you don't need to go right through the center of the coin. I can just get close to the coin. So as long as I nick the coin on an edge, um, that coin will disappear. Yeah, so I, that could, I think, let's see, there's a one. I might, that could, maybe three. I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna try. Um, y equals negative 0.5 x plus 0.5. What's going to happen? I don't know. Oh, I just missed that one line. I just missed the one coin. Oh, Ellen, that's a great question, Ellen. Okay, I will, um, I will pose that to the developers. Is there a setting that could be changed so that decimals, we would write 4.5 and you, you would write 4 comma 5, though they mean the same thing. Okay, okay. Would that cause your students problems? Yeah. I mean, even if it wouldn't cause them problems, it's how you, it's your notation. So I think it's pretty. It's, it would be good to do that. I will. I will pass that to the developers. Okay, I'm going to give you guys about two more minutes. Two more minutes, and I want to share one other activity with you. One other activity. But you got. Oh, have you now? Have you tried another? Uh, yeah. So um. If you notice on my screen, if you notice my screen, some of them have like a like two check marks, a two or a, a one or maybe a four. So four people have tried um, Eileen's and has gotten that correct. And four people have tried Henry's and two people have tried Karen's. Six people have tried it. Berenice. And then let's see. Five people have tried this one. Okay, one minute, one minute. 
and then I'll, I will pause. This is a, you guys are doing awesome. And so, so this would be a, I will find a way to change that. Can I label the coins with the coordinates? That is, you're asking some wonderful questions. Uh, not that I know of, not that I know of. This is a, um, these coin activities are activities that you can't make on your own. I mean, you could, but there's a lot of stuff that would go into it. There are some templates that you can use, but labeling the coins is not, um, that would make it easier for the kids, certainly. But I don't think, I don't believe we can label the coins right now. Okay. I am going to pause the class. I'm going to pause. Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Had to pause the class. I had to pause the class. So, um, so in the chat window, like it? Yes? No? Would, you, would your kids like it? Is more importantly, would your kids like this activity? Yes or no? Or do you think it might be too hard for your students? Or do you think it'd be kind of just good? Yep, they will, they, some students will struggle. Yes, they will struggle. <laughs> I agree. And I think um, uh, Anya said very interactive. I think most of the Desmos activities are designed to be very interactive. In other, in other words, there is a, um, there's an action and a response. So whatever you do in Desmos, there is typically something that will happen. So the students get immediate feedback. And Beverly said challenging for some, and I said, yes. I think it will be challenging for some. I do agree. Um, let's, um, we, uh, you know something? I don't know if copying will be an option, but we'll come back and look at that and see. We'll come back and look at this and see. And I agree, uh, they would love to do their friends challenges. I do agree with that. I think uh, my, my kids always loved it and they always loved to stump, to try to stump me as the teacher. Naomi, that's, that, exactly is that that's exactly right that's exactly right it's a uh um there's not an adult telling them that they're correct or incorrect they know they know when they're correct or when they're incorrect and i i'm not i don't believe desmos is open source though they use a lot of open source tools behind the scenes and you can have at well and you can have access to a lot of their api things but i don't believe it's open source not like jojiba would be so, okay, do me a favor, do me a favor. Let, let me, um, I, I wanna share this, this next activity. This, this next activity. Uh, if you wanna um, go back to student.desmos.com and type in this code, I just want you to play with this maybe for five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, not long. I wanna give you, this is just a geometry activity. I wanted to give you an, another flavor of what you can do. I think that last activity was labeled as a practice. So that's something that you would give to your students and let them play. I think someone mentioned that before. Let those students play with the activity throughout the course of the week and you can jump in and provide feedback as needed. Oh, my goodness gracious. I need to get a picture of this response. And I'm not sure if I'm, I, I, is it Monarchy? I'm hope, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. The Desmos people are gonna love to see this. That feedback, that is an awesome response. So, um, so this, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and we're all muted, <laughs> it's okay. It would, it would be really, really cool if one day we could all meet. When all of this is over, one day we could meet face-to-face, -face, have a cup of coffee. 
So this, this activity, let me post this link in the chat. I forgot to do that. Let me post this link in the chat if you'd like to join this way. I think that's probably the easiest way to get the activity to your students. Um, I will let you play with this activity until about 740. And then I want to make sure that um, everyone is set up with, with a teacher Desmos account, and you should be. And um, the question came up is, can we copy the activities? And that's a great question. That's, I, I, I want, I'm interested in if we can copy that activity now. This is a, um, this is a short activity. There are only seven slides in this activity. And this is something that might take your kids maybe a day. A, a, in class, it would be 30 minutes at most. Yohan, that would be awesome. Love, love to meet all you folks. Oh, this would be so much fun. Oh, look at the shapes. You got. Look at this. Look at what you're doing and notice your shape is what you use on all of the other things. So what you're doing is you're creating this shape and then you're using the shape again on the next, on the next slide. Look at what you guys are doing. Oh, that looks like a bat or an umbrella. That's like a bat or an umbrella almost. Very creative. That's a creative one there. Oh, so is this one, Hester? That's creative. I like that. That's very interesting. I wonder, I wonder what's going to happen on this page for the next one. Oh, press play. Oh, oh, oh. I'm, that's a, that's a cool shape. That would be a, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave Hester feedback. And so Hester should see at the top of his screen, wherever he is, he should see a little notification icon saying that he was left feedback. He cannot reply to my feedback yet. Yet. I think, that's, I think that may happen. But right now he can see the feedback that I've left. And all of the feedback that I leave for him will be, will be, in, this one, will be in this one list. You guys are doing wonderful. You guys are doing wonderful. I'm going to give you maybe three more minutes to go through this activity. It looks, it looks like most of you are making very good progress through. And you can see, ooh, Oh, I like it minimized. I, I like that. I like, yes. I forget what happens on this. Hmm. Perfect, perfect. So I'm going to give you a two more minutes, a little bit less than two more minutes, and then I'm going to pause this for a moment. And uh, I want to make sure that everyone has their teacher account ready to go. And I want to make sure that everyone knows how to get an activity to their students.
Ooh. Ooh, very good. Very, very good. Very good. Okay, I'm going to pause this activity in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Sorry, I'm sorry, I had to pause it. So if I could have your attention on my screen that I'm sharing. So um, in this activity, this is an introductory activity. Do you think if you want to put this in the chat, would this be good for your students? Is this uh, too much for your students? Or um, is this uh, something that they learn earlier that your students should already know about? Um, what, what do you think? Would this be a good activity for your students? Very good. Yes, you guys are doing well. You guys are doing well. So, uh, yeah, you, uh, I like that too, to see what other students say. Oh, that math vocab. Yes, yes, math vocab. Did you find not having coordinates? Did that make the activity harder for you or easier for you? Do you think not having coordinates makes it harder for you or easier? Do, um, did you find your, it depends on the shape too. Did you find yourself wanting coordinates? Like, did, did you wish there were coordinates there? <laughs> no. I agree. This is a good introductory activity. <laughs> but as a teacher, I would like coordinates. Yes. <laughs> I think that's how I feel, Beverly. Not yet, but later I would like to see. I, I, think, I think this activity um, leads, uh, it, it provides like a need. Like, I wish there was a better way to describe, and somebody mentioned that earlier in the chat. I wish there was a better way to describe, and coordinates might help that, but not now. Not now. We don't want that now. We want that for later. Okay. You guys are fantastic. Here is something I did from a teacher point of view, if you're interested. Okay. On the first slide, uh, no, I believe it was this slide here. What happened to your shapes? And I, I saw these first three, these first three student responses. And so what I did with those student responses is I clicked on the little, I clicked on the little camera icon. And I took a picture of their responses. And what I wanted to do is I, I those, those pictures are kept in the snapshots tab up here at the top. And so what I did is I clicked on the snapshots and I organized these. I dragged the student responses. And so what we could do now is we could talk about these as a class. These are three responses. Which response do you, do you like the most? Um, is there anything that you would add to the responses? So now you can have a discussion in your class about um, about precision, 
using someone mentioned before, using proper vocabulary, um, even when we get back into class, this is a useful thing to do. I agree. I agree. Okay. So here's what, here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. I want to get us, um, I want to make sure that you are set up as a teacher and I want to show you how to um, launch one of these activities for yourself. So if, if you would, if you would go to teacher, I will post this in the chat for you, teacher.desmos.com. And I will grab that link and I will post it in the chat for you. And then once you get here, once you get here, just we'll pause for a moment. This is the, this is the teacher side of the Desmos activities. So this is where, um, this is where you go to find the activities or to, uh, or to create activities. So in the chat window, if you would help me please, with a yes or a no, do you see your name in the upper right corner? Like I see Steve Phelps in the upper right corner. Do you see your name in the upper right corner? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good, 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 good. You should because you've already logged in using your Google account. And, and so I use Google when I log in, I use my Google email. I want to make sure that one thing has been done. And you may have done this already. If you attended the first session that I did a couple weeks ago, when I was, uh, when I was calling from the parking lot of a restaurant, um, you only have to do this one time. So we'll do it now and make sure. But if you would pull down, your, your name is actually a pull down menu. If you would click on that little arrow by your name and select Desmos Labs, Desmos Labs. Make sure these four check boxes are checked. You want all of them to be checked. When you check them, it will save for you automatically. So go ahead and check those off. And if they are checked off or when you have checked them off, put a, a yes or a no, um, a, a Y or an N in the uh, chat window for me. And that way I will know you're, we're all together. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. These, um, these uh, things just allow for, uh, for the full functionality. So you can actually do all of the things that we were doing in our activities. So next thing, let's find an activity and let's try to get that to our students. What do you need to do? In the upper left corner, on my screen, it says home. So if you wanna click on home, and that takes you to all of their activities. And right at the top is distance learning grade eight. Not, not all of you may be grade eight teachers, but we can click on that to start. So these are all of the activities that Desmos has organized. And, and, that's, and I was wondering if yours look different than mine. It very well might, and that's okay. So do you have something different up here at the top on your page? It, it won't, um, that's okay. You can still click on it. If you, if you would like, if you would like to search for an activity, a particular activity, yes, featured collections. 
didn't say grade eight. Yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm, I, I, didn't, I didn't think about that. That's okay. That's okay. If you want to go to the right, far right side of the screen next to, um, there's a little link that says view all. If you click on view all, you will see all of the featured collections. And so somewhere in here will be the grade eight collections and see if that helps you with the grade eight collections. So I found my grade eight, I found the grade eight collections there. Oh, no, you guys are just really, really good. You guys are really, really good. This is a, this is like an advanced placement Desmos class. You guys are so good. So I'm going to click on, I'm going to click on the distance learning grade eight. And it doesn't matter that these are the 10 activities that are in this, uh, that are in here. And there might be a button. I don't have it because I've already added this to my collection. You, um, there might be a button that says add collection. If you click on that button, it will end up in all of your stuff. So you won't have to search for it anymore. It'll be in your collections link over on the left hand side. <laughs> now, um, this is my favorite, this is probably my most favorite activity recently. Turtle time trials. And suppose I wanted to get this to my students. If I wanted to get this to my students, I, I, like, I like this activity. So I'm gonna click on that activity. And this describes the activity for me. So this is something, if you're translating activities, this is probably things that you would need to translate. But I wanna get this activity to my students. So I scroll down the page just a little bit, and there should be a green button that says create class code. If you click on that button, this activity is now ready to be shared with your class. So to share this with your class, I'm going to click on view dashboard. That little link right there. And so this should look very similar to the things that you saw before. Um, this, this activity is now ready for you or my students to get into. And if you clicked on it, you can either provide this to your students as a screenshot, or you can copy this link down at the bottom of your screen and, and provide that link to your students like I have been doing for you today. I've provided that link to your students or I showed the students this screen. But this activity is now live and you can join it. You don't have to, but you could join it. My students could join it. Anyone who has this code could join it. I could put it on Twitter or Facebook and they could join it from Twitter or Facebook. Ah, uh, so let's see, yes. So how can I edit the activity? How do I edit the activity if it's possible? It, um, so, and, and how long, this is available typically for six months, and then the code is archived. Um, but yes, so typically it, it would be, a, typically it's six months before they, uh, it, it's put into an archive and that code could possibly be reused, but typically they have not been. And so the question was, I'm editing the activity. So I will go back to my teacher and this is gonna be the last thing I probably will be able to do. So if I wanna, um, if I want to find uh, an activity to do, like um, 
marble slide periodics, for example. Oh, I've got all of my. Uh, in the upper right corner, there is a, uh, a plus sign with three dots to the, to the right of it. If you click on the three dots, you'll either have the option to copy and edit. And if you do, then you can change that. You can change it. If that does not exist, you won't be able to most likely. Um, this activity does not work. It works, but it's not ideal for a phone device. Um, a tablet means it would work really, it works good on, a, on an iPad. So that's what those things mean, mobile, tablet, laptop means. So this is not best for a, for a phone, but um, it will work on a phone, just not ideal. And see, you guys, um, you guys are starting to uh, learn about um, the different pieces and uh, the computation layer and how to change those things. So that is perfect. You guys are doing well. Okay. Um, again, let me remind you, because I have another meeting. At eight. This is a man. This is just. It's been one Zoom meeting after another. Yes, my hints for phones, if there's only one thing on the page, it probably works pretty good. Uh, just guys, a remember to you, here's my email. And so if there's anything I can do to help in any way, if there's anything I can do to help you in any way whatsoever, please, please, please email. Do not wait, you will, you will not bother me. I, 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 love your, I love your emails. I love to hear from other people who are trying to work with Desmos. Um, so, uh, so feel free to email me at any time and I will, uh, I will respond back. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Johan, that is, that's all I have. I, this is a, a, you guys give yourself a round of applause. A little light clap for you guys today. You guys did awesome. Awesome. And um, if there's anything I can do to help, I've got to go to another meeting. Um, but I will see uh, the rest of the crew next Thursday, correct? Yes, 10 to, 10 to 12. The grades 10 to 12. But you guys are also more than welcome to join. Um, yeah. Yeah. Open. Awesome. Thanks, Love you guys. Thanks for your Have time. A... Enjoy the rest of your day. See you next week. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, bye, thank you. Um, I hope you let it geniet. Um, what I verlede week ook gezegd, ons gaan nou stelselmatig begin. Kijk hoeveel van Desmos ons kan vertaal naar Afrikaans. Um, so as we hele klompie mense wat hulle hande opgesteek het, en daarvoor sê ons dankie. Um, en, en speel, en soos wat julle goed ons ontdek, laat weet my, laat ek het met al die ander mense kan deel. En dit is die idee van die vakvereniging, is kom ons, gooi al ons kennis by mekaar, en dan Ek is maar net een nodale punt om dit te versprei dan weer. So die tijd van uh, isole uh, isole isolerende gedagte is so, is so by ons is nou gedecentraliseerd. So, maar dankie julle, geniet julle dag. Um, ek het nou weer een webinar en um, soet wees, sterkte en kom ons hoop die skole maak hoop. Bye. Drie, twee, één. Tot ziens.